Hi, this is Steve at my workshop in Bellevue. Today we're doing lesson number four on horizontal routing on your shop Smith Mark 7, Mark 4, or on your 520. And of course, this is for the shop Smith self study course. There's three assignments in lesson four. The first assignment, which I'm going to demonstrate here today, is on the sliding dovetail. Here's your female, and here is the, the male. And of course, they just slide right into each other. That's why it's called sliding dovetail. Your second assignment is going to be doing a stopped groove in the edge. And your third assignment is going to be doing a stopped rabbit in the edge. So let's get on with our doing our sliding dovetail. We're going to cut the female joint first. And in doing that, we're going to route out the majority of the center of that dovetail with the quarter inch straight bit. That's the purpose of having that in there. And you notice I have two router chucks. I've got a half inch router chuck, which all of you had when you did the assignment. And I also have the quarter inch and I've got the a quarter inch shank quarter inch router bit modern than that. So I can just swap out my router chucks. I don't have to swap the bit back and forth between this one like you did on your assignment. So for demonstration purposes, this, this makes it a lot easier. Of course, you also notice here I've got the shield here upside down just for visibility for you at the moment. And you notice that I've removed the, the brush that's normally on there. And you probably notice when you did this assignment, when this is down underneath, that brush, all it does is end up catching a lot of chips and they won't fall down to the floor. So that's why I've removed the, the brush on this one. So there we go. So we've got our shield back where it ought to be. We're going to tighten that up. Okay, we can remove this brush from the area. And now our stock, you notice we position about half inch over the edge here, no less than a half an inch. And we're going to advance our quill until the bit just touches the edge of our stock. Of course, this is a one by four stock. Now you notice here on my depth gauge here, I've got that set on three eighths. That's one, two, three, four, five, six lines after the zero. So that's going to get us our depth. And of course, we're going to do this in three passes, doing an eighth of an inch each pass, flipping the board over each time so that we can get that centered in the edge of our board. And when I do this, I'm going to mute the sound so you don't have to be listening to the, to the motor going.
Okay, so now that we've got our slot, most of the stock removed here from our slot, now we'll do our dovetail, which is going to be a full depth we have to do on that. And I'm going to swap out this chuck so that we can put our dovetail bit in there. Now again, for visibility, I've got this up. Now, when we do the mate for this, I don't like to, I like to take these stickers off because it does have some thickness and could affect it. All right. So I want my dovetail bit when I, to be the same depth as what I just did. So I'm going to have to advance this till the very bottom of my bit here. To the very bottom of that groove right there. And we're going to lock it right there. Okay, that's where we're going to leave it. And now we'll put our shield back up where it belongs. Okay. Of course, this will be, we'll do a pass and we'll flip it over. And that'll be the completion of our female. And I'll unmute this again for you. Okay, so there's our female joint cut. And so now we're going to do the matching male. And we'll use this here piece to help set our initial depth for the mating piece. Now, I don't mean depth going that way. I'm talking about the depth of the table up and down the height of the table. So we want the we want to have this top part of the dovetail bit just encroaching past the bottom here. That's our starting point and then we'll creep up on that to get our exact fit. So we'll start here by raising that table. We got about there, right there, approximately. Looks like, yeah. Let's go from this side so I can see better. Hard for me to see from over there. Here we go. 
Now I can see a little better. All right, so we'll start here. We will start right here. You can see where I'm starting at. So that's going to be our first try. And I already know that this is going to be too wide, but then we'll creep up on it. Okay. So let's make sure this advanced. I forgot to lock it in position. All right. Let's do it again. Okay, we want this to be that deep right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's take our first pass. Now I want to show you something here a minute on your display screen on your your uh, headstock. If you come around here, when uh, you know in the instructions we told you not to run this continuously for more than about ten to fifteen minutes at a time. Oh, there's a, a a temperature control on here. If we do this button right here, if you look at this one right here, it's the it's for the uh, heat sink, the temperature. Now, right there, that says 45. That's 45 Celsius. When that gets up to 60, between 60 and 70, if it gets up to there, that's when you want to stop using your machine and let it cool off. That gets up to 70, the sh machine will automatically shut itself down. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing then. We can go back around to the other side now. Okay, well, this is going to be a short uh, pass, so I'm going to leave the mic on uh, while we're doing this uh, operation. Okay, so that's our first pass. And of course, you can see it's too wide. It's not going to fit. So we're going to have to change our table height. And what we want to do is we want to let the table down a little bit. So we're cutting a little bit more into it. And we just do the very slightest motion on this, on this wheel. Just a little bit at a time. Okay. Look at that. Lucked out. Now, this is actually a little bit looser than what I have liked would have liked it to be. Um, the one I did yesterday, this one's a lot tighter, you can see, a whole lot tighter. So to really fine-tune that, if you really want to get it tight like this, uh, if you come around here, I'll show you underneath. Your adjustable stop collar 
here. Yeah, see there? If you do that, then you can really fine tune it. If you don't, then you'll have to do it manually the way I did. And uh, even though I had that adjustable stop collar on there, um, I did not use it this time. As well as when I did it with uh, the one I did yesterday. I didn't use it either. I just crept up on it a little bit at a time manually. So that's your first assignment. And uh, good luck on your next one.